Okay, so today we're finally going to get started in actually serving content to the web in our web framework. And if we go to the Ruby standard library, the uh, library that we're going to be using is called Webrick. And this is the, the default um, server that uh, most Rack-based applications use. Uh, even though we're not building a, a Rack-based application ourselves, we can still use it just the same has everything that we need. So let's go ahead and start working on that now. Uh, before we put this into our framework though, I, I would like to create a file here in exe called server. Uh, we're going to be using this file in, in the future to start our server, uh, but before I put it, move everything into our framework, I'm just going to stage it here and show you how to get a Webrick server up and running. So first thing we need to do is copy our hash bang into our new script here and then of course we need to give that executable permissions so we can run it and let's go ahead and require the webrick library now and create a new instance of the webrick http server and it takes a hash as a configuration or a configuration as a hash and in our configuration, we uh, need to tell it two things. First of all, the port that we're going to be serving our content on. And in our case, we'll just stick with the conventional port 3000. And then we need to tell it the root path to um, the directory that we're going to be serving. So in, our, in this case, we want to use in the root of our framework, we're going to be creating directory called public and that's going to contain all of our I already created the directory that contains all of our or will contain our static assets so quick call to server.start and start the server so let's go ahead and do that server and there we go it's running so let's see what that actually looks like here let's go to localhost 3000 and we can see since it didn't find an index.html file, it's uh, just listing the contents of our directory. So if we put a file in this directory, for example, you'd see that the browser made a request to this fav icon, wasn't able to find it. So let's go ahead and create that file. So we'll create a new file called fav icon.ico. And if we refresh it, we can see that's right there able to download it and you can see next time that it made that request it uh, returned <coughs> the fave icon all right so let's go ahead and create um, an index file too so we can test that it actually will serve that index file instead of uh, showing the listing of our directory if we go back refresh it works so you might be wondering now, how do I actually shut down the server? It's actually pretty easy. All you do is, just like any other script in the terminal, you press Control c But unfortunately, that crashes our script. So you can see here, fatal interrupt. Fortunately for us, though, uh, Webrick um, recognizes it. It traps that, uh, it rescues, rescues from that error and it shuts down our server gracefully. And that's a good thing because if it didn't, this uh, port 3000 would be bound to a process that's not running anymore and we would either have to restart our computer or wait until that timed out, which could take several minutes. And in the meantime, we wouldn't be able to start our server again, which would really stink. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and fix this. And the way I'm gonna do that is by trapping that error myself or trapping that signal myself. So I'm going to say trap signal interrupt and we're going to just stop the server. So next time we press control C it's going to send server.stop and it's going to shut it down for us instead of letting letting it fail like this. Let's go ahead and run that. Press control C. And there we go. It works. Uh, but there's a couple things we want to fix here. First of all, it output the control C uh, 
command here to our terminal. And that what that is, that's basically the terminal saying, yes, I did receive that control C command. I did send it to the server to the script that's running. And in that case, we actually want to respond with a message. We want to want to make sure that we tell the user that we received that and that it's going to be handled. Because it could take a few seconds or even longer between the time that we send this control C signal to our script and it actually actually responds with this going to shut down message. For example, if, if a user was downloading a file during that time, uh, it would wait until that file was finished downloading before it shut down the server. And we'd have to sit there and wait uh, for this message and we'd just assume that it crashed and we could end up forcing it to stop and canceling the person's download and that wouldn't be good. So all we have to do for that is of course we could just print signal or shutdown signal received to our console to indicate that we did receive it. However if we do that as you can see it's kinda ugly. It prints it right after this control C and it doesn't use the same log format as Webrick. So let's fix those two things. It's pretty easy to do. First return the carriage to the uh, beginning of our line like that and then we'll use the server.logger this is an info message as you can see it just knows the rest are uh, shut down signal received now when we run it if we press control C we get a nice clean output and also this this message will be um, if we change this logger to to where it writes to a file which we will be doing in the future um, it'll it'll write this to um, print this in the log as well instead of you know if we just printed it to the to the terminal it wouldn't do that so the only problem that we have remaining is what happens if the person presses control C multiple times in between the time that this message is output and the sh server actually sh shuts down. So let's go ahead and simulate the server being busy. We'll say sleep for one second. So that'll simulate, uh, you know, so like I said, it'll simulate that the server is busy for one second. If we press control C a few times. You can see that what it does is it a actually calls this uh, block of code multiple times, as many times as we press that control C, and then it finally actually shuts down. And that could be a little bit annoying, especially if we accidentally hold down control C, it could call it hundreds of times before it finally shuts the server down. We don't want that to happen. So just put a line up here that prevents that. I'm going to say next if stopping. And the next keyword, or not keyword, but uh, command, will uh, it, it basically does the same thing as return does in a method if you're in a block. Since we're in a block here, we use next instead of return. Okay, so let's go ahead and immediately set stopping to true. And then after the server stops, we can set stopping to false. Okay, so we'll run that. And remove the sleep didn't I put that back in there press that a few times and it still calls it and that is because this stopping equals false is inside of this block so it's going to execute this code but every time we press control C trap signal interrupt is going to be called and since these are running in parallel with one another uh, this uh, instance variable um, it can't be read you know it's not going to be set until all you know, every single one of them finishes processing the, the stopping instance variable will be set all at once so to prevent that ha from happening we'll just move that outside of our our block if we run this press that a few times and the shutdown signal is actually only sent to our server one time. So. so the next thing we need to do is take um, what we just wrote and 
uh, make a more object-oriented approach. So we need to extract what's in our server uh, file and turn that into Ruby code instead of just having the quick and dirty script like we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera right now because it's going to take a lot of work and I don't want to bore you with the details because uh, what I'm going to do is create a um, an abstract uh, server so we can so we're not locked into only using WebRIC. Um, even though we we want to use we want to create a, a web framework that only uses the standard libraries in Ruby, we don't want to restrict our users of the framework uh, to where they only can use the standard library. We want to be able to let them use whatever server they want to use. So if they wanted to use Thin or something else like that, they could do it. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is create an abstract server that has the implementation and then, or not the implementation, but uh, kind of the interface for the implementation. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of work, so I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come back when I have it done. All right, so here's what our new server script looks like. It's a lot cleaner than the last uh, implementation. So what I did was I created the abstract server which has our interface, then the WebRick server here, which kind of uh, is a, a wrapper for our WebRick HTTP server. And using this method, we can uh, uh, descend from framework abstract server and have a very consistent way of starting our server. So if we wanted to use thin, for example, all we'd have to do is create a thin server to RP over here that would descend from framework abstract server. And then we'd want to implement these methods down here that uh, by default uh, fail with the not implemented error. So we want to take those, put them there. And as long as we had this very minimal implementation, uh, we could uh, write an adapter for, for any server that we wanted to use. And then, of course, if we were to do that, I'm going to delete this because I'm not going to keep it. Um, to use it, we would just have to change this to thin server and replace this with our actual configuration. So the way it works, uh, it's a little bit complicated, but I'll do my best to describe it to you. Uh, it took me quite a while to come up with it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start at the bottom of the abstract server. So that's the first class, and then WebRIC server descends from the, from this one. So uh, code usually makes sense if you read it from the bottom upward, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, this method here is what's responsible for, as you can guess, for actually shutting down the server. So I just took the code that was in our, uh, our original uh, server script here and copied it into this method. Uh, the only difference is now I have this, instead of server.stop, it just calls stop on a, the instance of the abstract server, or in this case, WebRick server. And uh, you'll notice too that I don't use the logger, so I'm not using server.logger directly, but instead I made uh, a method that needs to be implemented um, that will take care of the logging for, uh, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis or server by server basis. And then I have these methods here, start server and stop server. Um, well, hold on, I skipped a couple, or this one, didn't I? So shut down on interrupt. This is actually called in the, um, the initializer. And that, what it does is it checks to see if the server is running. If it's not running and it's not in the process of stopping, then it calls shut down. And uh, let's see, I have the public methods here, start and stop, which um, are already implemented. And originally I was going to have these methods here be the ones that you overrode in, uh, in the implementation. But then I found out that uh, if I did that, it would make things a little bit more complicated or put more overhead on, on the implementation than I wanted. 
specifically in setting these uh, variables here. And what those do is just tell it if the server is running and if it's stopping. And that's about it. And then the rest of it here is just to, uh, this is what makes it possible to pass a block in for configuration. And that's just a little bit of a shortcut. So instead of ha having to instantiate this and then saying server.config duration, or I suppose you could say new.tap to server. Ah, that would be messy, wouldn't it? Anyway, so that's just a just a convenience method, really. And the reason why I made this configuration uh, instance, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just make that uh, an ATTR reader as well and instantiate it here? So I should, I could have easily just put this up here and then put uh, TR reader configuration and delete this method. But in doing that, that restricts our um, it's basically telling our server how it's going to, what its configuration value is going to be. It's saying that it's always going to be a hash, and it might not always be a hash. Maybe some other server instances um, don't uh, don't want to have a hash, or don't need a hash, and so yeah, so we can override this configuration method in our implementation uh, when necessary. So hopefully that that explains how that works. It's a bit complicated, like I said. Um, might want to have, you might want to actually sit down and read through this code on your own, and study it to figure out how it works. Or maybe, maybe I'm over-explaining it, and it's really obvious. I don't know. So here's the implementation. So I just took, um, created the Webrick HTTP server in a private method, and then implement stop, starting and stopping it here, and implement logging. It's really simple, very clean, and in the future, if we wanted to use something else, I suppose we did want to use thin, all we'd have to do is change this to thin server, uh, change out our configuration values here, and then create a new file called thin server, and just kind of copy this over, and then implement these methods here. Actually that one is specific to Webrick server. So this is what the uh, very minimum implementation looks like and we would be able to use that uh, for anything theoretically. So I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Um, it still needs to be tested but to test this is actually going to be quite difficult, so I'm going to test this off camera. Um, I'm not going to explain how the tests work. Um, I think that would be too complicated, kind of outside of the scope of what the purpose of this um, video series is. So I'm going to go ahead and test it off camera um, and then push this code up to GitHub. I'm not going to test it today, so the tests might not be there by the time this episode gets on. Uh, YouTube or uh, before the uh, code is pushed to GitHub, but uh, I will eventually do that. I'll get to get around to it. I promise. Uh, but for now, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.